I'm Jean Marie Heron, Certified Professional Organizer. Welcome to Posse, productivity and organizing solutions serving everyone in your home, your home office, or virtual. If you want to see my organizing and productivity classes and videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button. All right, everybody. So welcome to this month's Posse's Pen. Today, I'm so excited because this is a really fun topic for me. We're doing something called the Closet Edit. So welcome. And uh, for those of you who are new to me or my Posse's Pen Call, my name is Jean Marie Heron. I'm what's known as a CPO, which is a certified professional organizer. And I own and manage a company called Posse's Par Posse Partners. And really what we do is we specialize in whole home decluttering, which is residential organizing. And we also do workplace productivity. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. So a couple of housekeeping and agenda items. I am gonna ask everybody to stay on mute, please, until we get to the Q&A section. And if you have a question, go ahead and type it into the chat box. My assistant, Deborah, is on the call and she will be manning the chat box. And at the end, we'll have a recording and within about a week's time, I'll send it back to everybody um, who is registered. So this month we're doing the closet edit and I have a lovely guest presenter with me, Cheryl Rose Katz of Fashionista Friends. And Cheryl and I met at the Ridgewood Chamber of Commerce and decided to collaborate. And we thought, what a better topic. Um, and you'll understand that when Cheryl tells you what she does. So go ahead, Cheryl, and tell everybody briefly what you do. Yeah, sure. So I'm Cheryl Rose Katz and I'm an image consultant. And what that means is really getting to understand who somebody is, their goals, their motivations, and dressing them from the inside out and balancing it with their appearance and communication skills. Excellent. So she does all that and I just help people get organized. Okay. So those of you who do know me know that I love acronyms. And I love to say that when you're organized, you have no more frets. So by getting organized and leaving your worries behind, because what happens is when you truly get organized, um, we know it touches our financials. We know it touches our relationships. We know it touches our emotions, our time, our space, our energy. So in today's presentation, we're going to teach you how to know, have no more frets and the benefits of being fashionably organized. So today is all about a deep dive into decluttering your closets. Oh, and I- If we could just go back to that- uh, Oh, sure. 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 So, you know, I just wanted to add here, because obviously um, these are the main components about why you want to keep your closet organized. And just to go into the littlest bit of more detail. So when we talk about the financial, the whole thought is, is when you're able to be fashionably organized, you don't overbuy. You know, part of that is also buying the same stuff over and over again, but particularly it's with the understanding of what really works for you. So that way you create your own personal store. Uh, the other idea with financial is that idea of cost per wear. And we're going to go through that a lot more. And emotions, a huge, huge topic about why we want to be fashionably organized. Just think about it. How do you feel when your closet is not organized? versus when it is that like oh, sort of moment when it finally feels just so good and you have that feeling of joy and tranquility. So that's why it's really wonderful that all of you are here today to talk about how do you get that closet organized. Great. And Cheryl told me when I got on the call that she liked my shirt. So thumbs up for me. So today um, I'm going to do best do the decluttering aspect and then Cheryl will tell you what you need to maybe implement into your wardrobe and your image after we declutter your closets. So whether we organize a closet, a garage, or a junk drawer, my methodology is the same, SSPOE. So we're going to go into each letter in detail, but I just want you to take a look at this closet picture and maybe take a deep breath because I don't know if your closet doesn't look anything like this, looks a lot worse than this, and it doesn't matter because beauty and organization is in the eye of the beholder. Um, but in this particular case, you could either, if you have the time, you could take everything out of the closet and do what I'm about to tell you, 
Or if you think that would be too overwhelming and you don't have enough time in your day, you can go ahead and maybe choose a wall or choose a category like today, we're gonna organize the sweaters. So here comes your methodology. And step number one is what I like to say, sorting. This is huge. It is really the first basic step in any organizing endeavor. Um, I was working on a very large estate clearing project this week, and it was a really large home with tons and tons of content. And uh, my client said to me, how do you even know where to begin? And I said, honestly, it's all in the sort. So it's the same thing with your closets. So you're going to pull everything out and you're going to sort it the way you like to associate. So, you know, maybe you're all about like with like, ties with ties, shirts with shirts, jeans with jeans. You want to say anything here, Cheryl? Yeah, sure. So when I do a closet edit, uh, like, like and like right together. So say you have um, blouses, right? You might want to then sort it into then subcategories. So you have short sleeve and long sleeve. And then I also love to sort stuff by color. And then when I do it by color, because black and dark blue look so similar, those two I'll always make sure they're very separate. Great. So after you sort into categories, our next step, our second S stands for select. So now that everything's out of your closet and you know, these are my ties, these are my scarves, these are my bras, these are my flats, um, I want you to get selective and think, okay, if I have 20 pairs of jeans, you know what? Realistically, I think I love these 10 and these 10 can go. So it's that decision-making, you know, um, and during the decision making, a lot of things might come up in your head, but I want you to remember three things. We tend to wear the same 20% of our clothing 80% of the time. And I have two mottos and maxims I like to give out. One is when in doubt, get it out because most likely you will not miss it, but don't throw anything out if you feel like you'll never be able to replace it and it's too valuable. That's a different emotional uh, conversation. Um, and over a year, have no fear. So I love to say that when editing a closet. So to add to that, in terms of the get it out, a lot of times people will say, well, what about stuff that just means something to me? I don't necessarily wear it. It's that memorabilia. Well, if you're not wearing it, but you really want to keep it, well, keep it. And Jean Maria will probably go into it more later. Uh, you know, put it into a bin. Maybe that goes into the basement. Maybe that goes into the attic. But you really want to create, picture your own personalized store where you're not wearing 20% of the clothes, where you're enjoying all of the clothes. And a big thing with that is sticking to your style, your colors, your best line and design. And obviously, if you're not sure, that's, that's what I do to help people. You know, everybody's body is beautiful in its own way but it's important to understand what looks best on me. And the other thing is remember your dressing goals. We all create a message by what we wear. What is our intrinsic style? So it's really good when you're able to do that deep dive of understanding, what is your message? What is your objectives? When I work with people, one of the things that I love to ask them is what are your, the characteristics about yourself that you really love? And therefore, you want to make sure that people see that when they see you. And of course, as uh, G. Murray spoke about it, if you love it and you use it or you need it, we'll keep it. But if not, then of course it goes. Yeah, got to go. Okay. How does it go? So you learn the first thing you do is you sort everything into categories. And then you learned it's a selection process, right? So you're determining your keepers versus your non-keepers. Well, now the third step in the methodology is purge. And just because I use the word purge, it doesn't necessarily mean garbage. What it means is now that you know these articles of clothing are not staying in this closet, how am I going to get them out of my house? Are they going to be donated? Are they going to be sold? Um, are they going to be turned into some beautiful memorabilia project like a t-shirt quilt or, you know, a wedding dress pillow? Um, but truly, if it really, you know, if it's stained, tattered, has holes in it, you know, do throw it out in the garbage. Uh, when you're donating something, you ask yourself the question, 
would you wear it? Uh, Deb mentioned earlier, in case there's anybody who came on late um, in the chat box, there's a link to my website, which is gonna house all of the resource lists for today. And I do have a memorabilia resource list in that link. And those are fantastic, fantastic resources. You know, the big uh, story of course has been sustainability when it has come to wardrobes. And when you're thinking about selling it, one of the things you might wanna look at, because there's a whole bunch of different online sites in which you could sell your merchandise. And you know, some of them take only certain designers, some of them don't. But the other thing too is, where do those clothes go if they don't get sold? And a company like ThreadUp actually makes sure that it doesn't wind up in landfills. So those are the things you might wanna consider when you wanna go and you sell your clothing. Yep, and the other thing you might wanna consider is if you have something in your closet that just needs a little tweaking, then maybe it should stay. Exactly, and that's alteration. And that's about bringing new life to old clothing. And it's amazing sometimes the things that you can manipulate to make, sh uh, to give it new life, which you wouldn't have thought about before. Uh, let me give you an example. I had this great embroidered top uh, excuse me, it wasn't a top. It really was a dress that went to basically close to my ankle with like this flare pouncy sort of design at the end. But the fact of the matter is I had bought that for a fashion show that I had done, uh, but I realized it really had almost like too much of a childish sort of quality to it, but it was such an amazing top. So what did I do? It was worth it for me to actually have it shortened to be more at uh, hip weight, uh, hip length. And I brought it in too. And for me, it was completely well worth spending the money for that. And that's the thing, is it worth it? The other thing too is discovering your most flattering length. When you look at hems, where you always wanna stop your hem is right where then the body then becomes more narrow, right? You don't wanna stop it and then you actually widen out because then it won't be as flattering of a length. So there's been many times when I've worked with clients where they're like, ugh, I don't like the skirt. But when we just brought it up just a little bit, it's like, Oh, well, that does look good. And to change hemlines, completely worth it. The thing to keep in mind, though, is shoulders to making sure that they are uh, at the accurate place. That, unfortunately, is something that you really can't alter. So if you find something that just doesn't look right up here, mm, time to get rid of it. Awesome, thank you. So now you've learned sorting, you've learned selecting, you've learned purging and possibly even alteration. So that brings us to step four, which is what I like to call the big O. And for me, the big O stands for organize, containerize and labelize. Now, when Cheryl and I were going over this PowerPoint and I got to this slide, she said, Jean Marie, are you sure you wanna call this slide the big O? And I had no idea what she was talking about. So I'm gonna stick with this. Um, because my brain is all on organization and not in the gutter, but I thought it was very amusing. But the big O here in SSPOE is all about giving our things a home. So what has happened so far is we've taken everything out of the closet. We've sorted it. We've selected it. We've gotten rid of the things we don't want, or maybe they're at the tailors and we're left with our keepers. So now we have to decide where, what kind of address, you know, everybody who has a home has an address. Where in your closet are these keepers going to stay? So you can count and measure your categories. So you know how much long hanging you have, short hanging. Maybe you know you have 80 pairs of shoes, you've got 50 belts, whatever it is, no judgment. Um, but think about how you want your items stored. You know, are you an open storage person? Are you a closed storage person? Um, decide if you're going to get any kind of a product what homes do you need? You know, closed baskets. Do you need to run to Bed Bath & Beyond or the container store? So I'm going to go to the next slide, Cheryl, and talk about homes and zones. So we want to think homes and zones. So we want to think about um, how am I going to find it so that I can use it? And will it be easy to put away? Do we want to hang something versus fold? We want to say, how can I give blank? 
put whatever item of clothing you want in this blank. How can I give my flats its own space? And always think vertically, think about good storage solutions and products. Um, you know, you don't have to build a custom closet, but if you invest any kind of money, it's just going to add to not only the value of your home, but the value of your mind when trying to get yourself dressed. And um, it, it, the bottom line here is that if you invest your time, energy, and money into designing your closet and making it look beautiful, highly, highly likely that you're going to maintain your systems. Cheryl? Right. Talking about homes, you know, I, I've worked with clients where they have things in their closet that are not wardrobe related. You know, some kids stuff, some some just stuff that was just thrown in. And that's when it's a good time to say, is this really the home for it? No, it's not because you want that beautiful picture. No matter if your closet is small or large, you want that to be your wardrobe and really nothing else. Yeah, and try to think one category per space. So for example, the product up in the top left, which is basically an over the pole shoe organizer, you know, maybe that's just the home for your flip flops, or maybe that's just the home for your camis. Think about just having one category per space. If you look at the drawer dividers in the picture in the middle on the top, that now takes a larger space and breaks it down into three spaces visually. So those drawer dividers are excellent for saying to our eyes, oh, if I put the socks on the left, the underwear in the middle and the bras on the right, all of a sudden that drawer makes sense rather than mixing all three in one space and it being what I like to call commingled. Now that we're in today's technology, Cheryl's going to tell you about the possibility of digitizing your closet. All right. So this is some very cool software that I can use with my clients where it gives you the ability to view your closet from wherever you are on your phone, your computer. You might say, why do I want to do that? Well, first of all, I, I think this is more for larger closets. Um, and it's very, it's great because then you, you have inv your inventory there. Uh, you're able to easily create outfits. So you can see here, uh, you could create categories and not only can the client do it, but I'm able to set up, uh, you know, special packages where I can use their existing clothes, bring in some new clothes to create different looks for whenever they want. It's also great when you are trying to pack looking at all your stuff and great for shopping and picking out matching clothes. You know, how many times have you been to the store and you're like, ha ha ha, what was that color blue? What was it that I needed? So, and it's just, it's fun. It's one of those things that, uh, do you need it? No, not necessarily. Um, however, like I said, if you do have those bigger closets, it is really great for being able to just quickly get to what you want. Super. Sounds like fun. And here comes a fun picture. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about fashion is fleeting. Um, never feel guilty for past fashion mistakes because that is fashion. That's not your intrinsic style. And with that said, it is very important to never feel that you need to buy what is, I'll quote, fashionable. What you really need to be in tune to is your intrinsic style, what makes you feel good, what creates the message you want, and obviously what looks good given your body. Uh, the most important thing is to invest in key pieces. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the dog brings. I am so glad I'm not the only one with the dog. <laughs> okay. You want to invest in key pieces, which are your classics. And um, so picture like your sheets, dresses, that sort of thing. You also want to, in, like I said, understand that intrinsic style. And that is what I help people with. This is live, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the only one here, I really do apologize. Oh, my goodness. You want to dress for your body type. And this is what I was getting at before. And the goal of dressing for your body type is to emphasize the positive and camouflage the negative. But what you may think is a positive, so say, I'll give an example, maybe um, small, small chest. 
Well, for one person, that actually may be viewed as a positive, while for someone else, it's not. And it's important to really be okay and say, okay, this is what I want to show more. And there's all these visual tricks. You know, do you want to look more elongated? Do you want to look thinner? Uh, what is it that you want to bring out? This is the best advice I could possibly give you is the focus on the face. Whatever you wear, no matter what the clothing is. Um, oh, does Cheryl want to take a break? Is it too loud with the dog? Uh, everybody? What do you yes. Think? Marie, is it too loud? Yeah. All right. Do you want to go corral the dog and I'll keep going? Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Because, yep. Because we only have about 10 more minutes. Okay. Right, one, you go corral the dog. I'll mute me. Okay. All right. So I am not the fashion person, but I'm going to continue on. So I can read a uh, note. Cheryl put this together and these were the 2021 trends to add to your classics. So these are the items she suggests that we have in our female closet and then for the men on the right. So bright colors and pastels, simple t-shirts, florals. She said that vests were back in. So were puffy sleeves and shoulders. Um, and I even have some of my own cropped and wide leg pants this summer as well. Lightweight midi skirts. So I think there was a picture, maybe it's in the next one of what that looks like and in satin. Bigger, chunkier jewelry and then chunky flats for our feet. So make sure if you don't have those in your closet that you get to add them to your closet. So that brings us to the wrapping up of the methodology, SSPOE. So we talked about the sorting, the selecting, the purging, the organizing, putting everything back in, in categorically, products if you need it. And then we talked about, you know, the image and the wardrobe in case you need to add anything. But what are we gonna do on a daily, monthly, seasonal basis so that you're able to maintain your closet system? So this is really all about, I've done all this work, I've spent hours, you started with that picture in the beginning of the presentation, you've taken everything out, you've done everything you were supposed to do, how are we gonna maintain it? So who's gonna be the gatekeeper? You know, if you share this closet with other people, what's their role? You know, I like to say, um, I have these little ditties again, you know, under two, please do. So at the end of the day, when something has to go to the dry cleaners, where does that go? Um, I had mentioned, I think we talked about a donation bin before. A great thing to have either in your closet or your laundry room is a donation bin. And every time, you know, oh gosh, those shoes really hurt my feet. I don't want to wear them again. Let's put them in the donation bin. And then once a month, you schedule a pickup. Uh, along that same line of being able to declutter on a regular basis, it, what are some of the things, you know, that was on Cheryl's list about adding in, you know, you can keep a list on paper or digitally about the things that should be incorporated into your, your summer wardrobe. Um, and then lastly, this whole process, whether, you know, we said fashion is fleeting, but this whole process with the methodology of SSPOE, it's not like you're going to declutter your closet and it's going to stay perfect. Life is not perfect and organizing is a journey. So you're always going to be tweaking your closet as time flies. Um, okay, Cheryl, you're unmuted. I kind of quickly went through your summer trends, but we're getting close to the Q&A section. Did you want to add anything in before I close us out with our contact and then Q&A? Anyone has any questions about uh, what you need to really buy at this point, um, you know, please feel free to ask during the Q&A. I think yeah. the most important point in that slide is the idea of elevated, uh, elevated casual um, or elevated comfort, I should say. They're almost basically the same thing. So think about it. We've all been in lockdown. We've all gotten very used to wearing very comfortable clothing. But as we reemerge, there's clearly this idea about continuing to feel comfortable, but of course you want to elevate it. The other thing too is, 
I believe that, and, and I bet all of you would agree, you know, things just feel more hopeful, seem more positive. And that's why we're, we got that look of wearing more bright colors, more pastels, you know, things that just make us feel more hopeful for the future and more happy. And those are really the colors that we're seeing over and over again for both women and for men. Cheryl was telling me on a previous call, and I didn't even know about this website, but the color of the year from Panatone was, I don't know what the name of that yellow, but the color of the year was this particular yellow for all those reasons she just spoke about. Right. Because of sun fields, you know, what does yellow bring? It's sunny. It's happy. And uh, pink is very big right now too, especially for men. So, um, you know, bring in your happy colors is what I would say to you. Great. All right. So you have your methodology. You've learned your methodology for today. Um, this is how to reach Cheryl. And Deb is also going to put everything um, will be in the chat and we'll have on the follow-up email. Right. And I think um, what's really important to also ask yourself is once I have that beautiful closet, how do I keep it being beautiful? And the most important thing is being in tune to your style, to your color, not buying things that are just merely on sale. There's a PDF that's included that I had written up with just some helpful thoughts, but always feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Super duper. All right. And get your questions ready. We're just about to open it up. So get ready to take yourself off of mute. But before we do that, I just want to let you know that the July Posse's Pen is on July 21st at 1230. And we're moving back to a productivity topic. And it's going to be, are you listening? Um, the very productive power of using both lists and forms. So this can be from a business standpoint, as well as a personal standpoint. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I do a monthly newsletter. Um, I'm on Facebook. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. And all of our Posse's pens are now recorded on YouTube. And if for some reason you really, 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 really like what I do, feel free to write me a Google review. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to go back to the Brady Bunch. Oh, now I can see everybody's wonderful faces. So here we are, and we will open it up to Q&A. Give us your fashion or cluttery questions. Go for it. Ellen? It's not that I have a question. It's that I just have a compliment for both of you. So you did a great job in just pulling all this together. And I've done color consulting and everything with Cheryl. And she's absolutely amazing. Um, Cheryl, your contact information, your Cheryl Rose Consulting, that goes directly to your fashionista friends. Okay. So that's a really excellent question. By the way, thanks for um, that lovely, lovely comment. Uh, I am actually rebranding my company. You know, uh, just with style and how it changes throughout our life, I, I feel like my company name of Fashionista Friends uh, wasn't resonating with me. It was a little bit too cutesy. And I'm actually taking back my own name, which is Cheryl Rose Katz. So uh, my company name is just me, which is Cheryl Rose. And while I've changed it on Instagram and Facebook, I just haven't, uh, I'm still working on my website. Okay. Awesome. Love a woman with two first names or first name and middle name. <laughs> All right. There's got to be questions here. Even By the way, Lorraine, you look very smart. Very smart. I see the chunky jewelry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, you know, I've learned so much from you that, you know, I really, <laughs> I just love to take it all in. And I'd like to see Cheryl. Um, I think I just met her at a networking meeting last week. Oh. And so it was just, it's just, I, uh, I always refer to you and everything you always taught me. So. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Jean Marie, this is Sue. Oh, hi, Sue. Hi. It's hard not seeing your face. I'm like, my eyes are all over the place. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, I have two comments, mm -hmm. and um, I think you're the, you, this is excellent, and you always have wonderful people to share your, your monthly um, topic with. Um, two comments that mm -hmm. people might want to know about is um, recently, I don't know if people are familiar with the flow 
uh, green film series in the flow is Frank Franklin Lakes, Oakland and Wyckoff that we share a high school. And the, re the environmental commissions from those three towns recently did a web, a web webinar, I guess it was, film festival on um, echo fashion. Ooh. And it was fascinating. And they talked about some of the things that you mentioned. And I do believe, and it, and it talked, you know, just of all different things of, um, you know, fast fashion being sort of anti-environment, but also they had, a, they had three panelists who talk, talked about the fashion industry. And one was a woman who started up a company who, who, who takes bras, old, unused, and turns it into carpet padding. Wow. And um, so things like that. But I do believe that the film was recorded. So if you go to Flow Film Festival, Flow Green Film Series, in any of those towns, you might be able to link into the, to the program. It was really very interesting. And then the second comment I want to make is, is um, I love how you guys talk about donating things. And, and um, you actually don't really even need to throw away old clothes into the garbage. If, if you know those boxes and those bins that are around town, I recently learned that you can put your torn and ripped stuff in there because those companies actually use the fabric and um, they make rags and they sell them or, you know, they'll repair them and, get, you know, they'll do different things, but they do use the old you know, unless it's like really, really bad, like my husband uses stuff for painting, we throw that away. But um, there is a use for your old stuff that's, you know, clean and whatever. Um, and then the last thing that I don't know if you have any comment about, but what I'm learning recently on the environmental front is that certain fabrics like, um, like fleece and um, recycled polyester from recycled plastic bottles. Um, it's not as good as you might think because mm -hmm. the, the microplastics will in your washing machine will come off from the fabric and go into our water system, our drinking water system. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's another environmental thing to be aware of when you're buying product. So I hope I didn't go on too long here, but I just had to put those three things in. <laughs> Yeah, it was wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Wonderful. So it was Flow Green Film Series for anybody who wants to look that up in the towns where Franklin Lakes, Oakland, and Wyckoff. Um, thank you for talking about the rags. I actually should have mentioned that, and I did not. So thank you for that. And I'm so upset because, believe it or not, my favorite kind of clothing to wear is fleece. Like, I'm the fleece girl. <laughs> you, you know, I'm not sure, but there may be different types of fleece. I don't yeah. know much about it. You know, that's just what I heard recently. Right, depending yeah. on how it's made. Yes. So. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you, Sue. You're All welcome. right. Anybody else? Anne, go ahead. Take yourself off mute. You're still on mute, hon. Oh, can't hear you. Can't hear you, Anne. Should be like the top, right? Yeah, okay, I think that's it because it had a, long, a list of things. Unmute, mute. But anyway, um, Jean Marie, as I spoke in the beginning, did organize me with my closets. This was unbelievable what she had to go through. But because we were on lockdown in Florida for so many months and, you know, I had everything back and forth and so on for a couple of years, I'm needing Jean Marie again to help me organize. Uh, my closets, both actually, the one that she calls the attic, that's, you know, the real big one, and then the big one off of the master bedroom. And I'm lost every time I go in there, I can't find anything, including pocketbooks. I'm saying, oh, where's that pocketbook, the red one that I need, or where's this? I'm completely out of whack at this point, and I need help. And I'm just wondering if she <laughs> would be able to do this, do the whole thing over again with me. Of course, I'll call you offline. Of course, of course, of course. Very good. Thank you, Jean Marie. So you actually may be a good candidate for digitizing your closet. And then what I would suggest if you decide to do something like that is actually put um, where it is located. <laughs> so that way it would be very easy for you to just go and be like, oh, there's that red bag and it's over here, you know? Well, that sounds good. That sounds good. Now, like belts, I must have, I would say at least a hundred or more belts 
and they're in different areas upstairs in the one closet and then the ones that I use the most are down here but it's spread all over sometimes it's attached to a dress and I might need it for another outfit and I can't find it because it's already hanging up someplace so that's the digital you know digitalizing is would probably do it I would think do you think so do you back think in the day I because I, I, Anne is probably giving me permission to speak freely here. Yes. So we did um, one particular project. So Anne loves costume jewelry, right? And Anne has a lot of clothes. And the way, remember how the beginning when I said S for sort is based on your associations because every brain type categorizes differently. And the way Anne liked to put her clothes together, she liked to have the whole ensemble with the costume jewelry. That was just the way her brain thought. So like when she was done with an event, she wanted to make sure that the jewelry she had picked out stayed with that particular outfit. So um, back in the day, this was my old school organizing thinking. We just took plastic baggies, depending on the size of her costume jewelry, snack baggies, court baggies, you know, gallon baggies. And I punched a little hole in the top for the hanger. And we would in these clear plastic bags and we would slip it right over the hanger so she could put her outfit away with the jewelry intact. So the next time she wanted to wear that outfit, she didn't have to think anymore about, you know, the belt, you know, the hair clip, the costume jewelry. So a lot of times just you can really think about what you want to do and how you want it organized. Um, I've worked with a lot of people who um, have some colorblind issues. And in those cases, like when I first met my husband, um, he organized his suits. It was the suit, the shirt, and the tie. And that's the way for him that it worked because that was his association. So, you know, you know, take some time to digest the information that you got here. And when you think SSPOE, really think about how you want to be using your closet and what solutions might work best for you. I love how you talk about the jewelry. I do that with my clothes. <laughs> I, it's not so much that I have to think about it, what I'm wearing with it, but it's just that I'm running out in the morning. And I'm yep. ready to get ready. And I can't find, I have one earring. I can't find the other earring. I can't find the back of this. So I just put it all together in a little mesh bag and hang it over the thing. Absolutely. And it's a huge time saver. Like it that's is. actually a great productivity trip, trip, <laughs> tip, 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 tip. You know, I grew up, um, my dad worked in the city and he, back in the day, he wore the three piece suit. And I used to remember him coming home off the train. He'd walk into the house. And the first thing he would do is he would take that three-piece suit off. He'd put it on the wooden hanger. And that would go in the back left of the closet. And then the suit that was in the front would come out. It'd go on his valet for the next day. He'd put the tie out, put the dress shirt out. And then he would even, he wore a wristwatch. And at the time, he had to wind them. He would take his watch off. He would wind it. He would open up the second drawer of his chest and he'd put it in the back left corner. And then he'd take the watch that was in the right, right, right hand corner out, wind it up and set it out. So, you know, I tell you that because these are systems. These are systems that we set up to work for ourselves the way we think, the way we work to save us time, energy, money um, and space. You know, I always say the acronym for a system is saving you space, time, energy and money. So as you're going through your closet, decluttering and maybe adding a few things, you know, with Cheryl's wonderful recommendations, think, what is my system? What is my closet system? But Jean Marie, I think you told us that story because you were sharing that it's rather genetic. <laughs> okay, so I'm very glad you brought that up because a lot of people have said to me, were you born this way? And I say, yes, I do believe I was born this way, but I also grew up in a house where whether it was my father or my grandmother, I saw systems being put into place. You know, so when my grandmother had that Sunday spaghetti and meatball dinner, it started with the food shopping on Friday night, and then it went to preparing the sauce and everything but the pasta on Saturday, and then setting the dinner table Saturday night so that when the company came in on Sunday, all she had to do was cook off the pasta and reheat everything else. It was all done so she could enjoy the company. But that being said, even though that's the way I was brought up, I would not even have this Zoom call if I did not believe wholeheartedly that organizing skills can be transferred. You know, and every day 
when I work in the field, that's what I'm doing. I'm transferring these skills to others. So even if you were not born with these genes, you can still learn. So that's the end of my preaching. <laughs> but thank you, Sue. All right, guys, we're at 110. So we went a little over unless there's more pressing questions. I think we can call it a day. Anybody have any last minute pressing questions for either Cheryl Rose or Jean Marie? All right. Well, then I hope to see you all on July 21st, where you get to maybe it won't be as interesting as closets, but you get to learn about lists and forms. <laughs> all right. Take care, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Care, everybody. Thank you. Remember, if you want to see more organizing and productivity videos created by Posse, hit the subscribe button and you'll be alerted when the next one is ready.